Dr. Barrett, you were chair of the COC for a number of years. Were there any um, particular accomplishments that you're proud of or projects that you started when you were there? Uh, well, it was 40 years ago, <laughs> so, but some things I can remember. Uh, in particular, it was a time of transition um, of, of the leadership. Uh, Dr. Winchester was just coming on, and uh, I think there had been perhaps a little gap in there, but in any event, he was coming on, and so that's always a difficult time for an organization to weather that, and so we were proud that we, I think we handled that pretty well. Um, we started something called a cancer management course. At that time, there was a perceived need for developing or providing for the membership um, some skills. They range from head and neck examinations to breast aspirations to endoscopy. Um, I, and then just basic cancer management scenarios uh, that we could go through. And so a course was developed um, and in, 90, in 83, we put on a uh, sort of a beta test and it went very well and then organized Dr. Richard Wilson, I think, uh, organized the first two courses and uh, they were funded, I think, in 84. And so I thought that was sort of an interesting concept then. I don't think it's continued. Uh, perhaps a lot of those things are, are taught uh, or there are more formal courses through industry or other ways uh, to get learn some of the newer skills. Uh, that come along. Um, the, uh, you know, we had the usual education um, liaison approvals process, which I thought uh, uh, went well and is always a hallmark, I think, of the success of, uh, of the organization. Um, so th those sort of things I think I can remember pretty well. So Bob, can you tell me a little bit about what you think the value of the Commission on Cancer brings for the um, care of the cancer patient across our country? You know, you know, I think I have a unique perspective on that, Lori, because there aren't many surgeons that have worked uh, in several different academic centers, large private clinics, and then in private practice in a private hospital. And so, I mean, not just sort of having a practice on the side, but being committed to practices in each of those environments. And so, I mean, I think I have a unique value view of it and it's sort of different in each one of those environments. I mean, some of those environments, you do a huge volume of cancer surgery. And in that setting, um, the, the, the value I think of the certification and more particularly the committees that are required by the certification, uh, focuses more probably on the unusual case rather than the average case that's running through the institution. But some of the private institutions that I've been involved with, it really is fundamentally important. It's the only opportunity for the various specialties to get together. Uh, and it's an opportunity to discuss cases and, and see what different groups are doing. Uh, new, new ideas that come along, new tests that one specialty may, or one, the pathologist may want to routinely run or an oncologist wants routinely run on such an, uh, certain cancers. So I think in that setting, the weekly meeting is, is fundamentally important. Um, uh, and the university centers may be somewhere in between where I don't think we did quite, the universities I've been involved with, we didn't do quite the same volume we did at the, at the Mayo Clinic, but we, uh, we did enough and you know i think the other thing that sort of is nice and nobody's talked about this really and it may not be practical but having um the different specialties located with adjacencies so that you can see the different specialties on a regular basis if you don't have that then the committee structure really becomes important absolutely so um at, when you were involved with all these different organizations did each, um, so like the private practice, community-based and academic centers, did each one have its own accreditation at that time or did they have the systems accreditation? Because we have that now and it sounds like maybe that was born from somebody like you who, who had experienced all these different practice settings. Yeah, no, I think um, we each had its own accreditation and um, in places like the Mayo Clinic, sort of feel how they do it is right no matter what the rules are. And then <laughs> places like the local hospitals that I've been with, like Dignity Health or community hospitals, um, they struggle a little bit. I mean, the accreditation process is a big deal for them. And uh, you know, maintaining a registrar is an expensive item and one that um, they often don't have well organized. And 
Um, the annual reports are sometimes sketchy and and often they fall way behind in their you know uh, follow up. And so, um, you know, I think the periodic registration and those probably are important. And doing a system wide one really would would not catch some of those or motivate some of those local hospitals to do those things, which I think are important. When you were the COC chair, what were some of the challenges that you experienced and how did the COC help you accomplish or uh, meet those challenges? Um, well, I mean, I, I think there were no major challenges. Let's just start with that. I mean, the people that ran the administrative personnel, Rosemary Clive, Dr. Winchester were terrific and that it ran, generally ran smoothly. I think we had to go through the process of getting, to getting the cancer management course appro approved, tested, approved, put together. Um, you know, I think it's always a challenge to come together with the courses for the annual meeting, October meeting or the spring meeting back then. And, um, you know, putting those together and getting all the right people and stuff is a time consuming uh, thing. But I think those are not unique challenges. They've been there for 120 years or 100 years, I guess, 1922. So, um, I don't think they're special, but they are a challenge. And I think each one of those is very valuable. I would not suggest that any one of those they'll be done away with. I think they're, uh, the liaison program, getting people involved is important, was important back then. So I don't think there were any major challenges, just some opportunities. It's a great way to look at it. I'm gonna say those opportunities still exist. <laughs> so um, Bob, is there anything else that you would like to talk about or mention uh, before we wrap things up? I, you know, I think I've highlighted it, but let me just emphasize that I think in the community, particularly, it's really important to have the structure in place. And it doesn't, it's not going to get formed naturally or normally unless there's some opportunity like this to go through accreditation and review it periodically. So I think the whole program, the field liaison program, the, the concept of, of um, having an, a, an approval or registrar publishing, or re looking at your results periodically is really fundamentally important. Um, I think the multidisciplinary nature of the commission is unique um, and important as well. But um, I, think, I think this program to get certification is really important. Agreed. Well, um, I wanna say thank you, not only for your time today, but also your lifelong commitment to the care of the cancer patients and for your dedication to the Commission on Cancer. I mean, clearly the um, programs that you started and your ideals and beliefs that you had, you know, had when you were chair are still in place today. And I think it's because of people like you that we actually can continue to improve the care of the cancer patient across the country. So thank you very much. Thank you.